in support of his family uh, to acknowledge uh, the passing of Corporal Abelin. And I'm sure with our people heading off overshore, uh, offshore very shortly, uh, this will be uh, something that's on their minds. And of course, uh, we uh, uh, share our condolences, but also look towards how we can uh, uh, effectively help Ukraine uh, during these times. So I wish them all the best, and I'll hand over to Rear Admiral James Gilmore. Thank you, Minister, and good morning, everybody. Um, I, I'd like to join the Minister in expressing my condolences to the colleagues in Fano of uh, Dominic Ablin. I know that a lot of his colleagues are here today. My thoughts are with you. Um, I'm, um, I'm proud to be able to stand here and farewell alongside the Minister, uh, this uh, main body, the contingent that will be going to the UK to conduct this really important training of, the, uh, of recruits uh, for the Ukrainian Army. I'm expecting that this contingent will be offshore until about the end of November, conducting two five-week training packages uh, for Ukrainian new recruits and some re new joiners. Um, it's, uh, it's really uh, a moment of, of pride for me as the commander of our joint forces to recognise that our professional soldiers are being used in this way uh, to instil a sense of confidence in the Ukrainian Army's new recruits for themselves, their colleagues, their procedures and their equipment. And I know that this will make the Ukrainian new recruits uh, more lethal on the battlefield and also uh, better able to be able to survive the experience. I, I, I should also note that once this training has been concluded for each of the training groups, the employment of those troops will be a matter for the Ukrainian military leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I think your team will take questions now. Minister, what does it mean it's up to the Ukrainian contingency once they've finished their training package? Uh, our role is specific to train these people in third country, and of course that's the UK. Uh, from there, they go into their leadership, uh, and it'll be up to them to decide what they do. But we would expect that the training is going to involve uh, uh, techniques and procedures, uh, weaponry, um, uh, tactics, uh, and uh, importantly, law of armed conflict. After the passing of uh, Corporal um, Abelin, has, has there been any specific instructions from personnel leaving now? Oh, look, um, I'll let um, Rear Admiral Gilmore say something, but you know, as I mentioned earlier, of course he's on our minds, and um, what I know about the New Zealand Defence Force is they are there to do a job and they do it really well, and I know that while that will be on their mind, they'll be focused on the task at hand. Oh, yeah, thank you, Minister. Uh, uh, that, that's correct. I mean, uh, none of the troops that we're sending offshore today uh, will be uh, entering Ukraine. Uh, they will be based in the United Kingdom, uh, uh, and uh, over the next uh, 10 or 12 weeks, we'll be conducting two uh, concise training packages to try and bring uh, new recruits and some rejoiners in the Ukrainian army up to a level where they will be effective on the battlefield. Have there been instructions to, you know, are they allowed to work off duty or that capacity? Okay, Minister, I'll, I'll go for that one. Um, well, we do have some people that are um, on leave without pay, and we've been making contact with all of those personnel to ensure that they understand uh, just how vulnerable they can be if they make decisions uh, whilst off duty to go into war, war zones. Um, the ability, as the Prime Minister has mentioned, uh, for our consular support or, or partner military support to provide any kind of support for our people when they're in those battle zones is almost non-existent. So, um, the, the instructions for our people that are heading offshore is they will not be on leave without pay and therefore uh, subject uh, to leadership within this contingent. I don't expect that to be an issue for this, con this trip. Okay, so I have to say, there are ways that they can do that. Whereas in the I'm sorry, I can't quite hear the question. You said that if the people leave without pay, that they were to go to Uh, if we're talking about the contingent that's leaving now for the training at scale, no one will be on leave without pay during that uh, period. It's something that is um, uh, when our armed forces personnel decide to take a break from their careers to try something else, um, it is not something that happens whilst you're, uh, whilst you're deployed on operation. Minister, uh, there's a couple of examples of uh, nurses travelling abroad to the Ukraine to work independently. With initiatives like this, do you think the government might loosen their stance on Kiwis going there at all? No, not at all, and we've got to remind uh, our citizens and our people, wherever they might be in the world, that Ukraine is an active war zone. Uh, and we've made it quite clear that there is a uh, no-travel notice for Ukraine, 
uh, and that will still stand and I can't see that coming away anytime soon um, uh, for whether or not they be uh, uh, ex-NZDF personnel or others who are wanting to go there and assist and just to reiterate um, Rear Admiral Gilmore's point is should they choose to go there they must understand that our ability to reach in and to support them through consular uh, efforts is almost non-existent. Admiral, what's the skill set of this group behind me that we'll be sharing with the Ukraine forces? Well, the group that's uh, that, that's with us today and about to travel are from uh, 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 from uh, the one RNZIR or Inf Infantry Regiment of the, of the New Zealand Army. Um, they have all of the skills uh, uh, required and at a very high standard that are able to be able to impart those skills uh, via training teams to the Ukrainian soldiers. Um, as, as we mentioned, that it's going to be to do with. Um, uh, our, our professional level being able to mentor and coach uh, these new recruits into a position where they'll be effective on the battlefield. I have every, confident, uh, every confidence that we'll be successful, um, but I should also say in terms of the Army's uh, regeneration and New Zealand Defence Forces regeneration, this is a really, really good um, uh, opportunity for us to be able to hone our skills whilst training others. How much of an impact that make for those Well, I... Well, I'm, I'm hopeful, obviously, as we all are, that that means the uh, Ukrainian troops that return to Ukraine and join the fight uh, are more effective on the battlefield, um, but uh, also uh, have, have an enhanced ability to be able to survive on that battlefield and be lethal whilst they're there. Thank you. Great, Admiral. How would you describe the atmosphere and the mood amongst the troops? How's the atmosphere, troops? We're going to call that quiet resignation, I think. Um, uh, I, th I think... Uh, uh, this is a great opportunity for, um, uh, for us to be able to do something that's really useful in terms of this conflict with Ukraine as part of the Support Ukraine mission. It's an opportunity for our people to get offshore and prove themselves, um, prove themselves in a training environment. Uh, I'm very proud of everybody here and um, they'll be joining a group that's already, already travelled and also, as the Minister has mentioned, uh, join a sequence of support that we've provided through uh, intelligence artillery support, the C-130 that provided support into, the, in, into uh, into Europe moving uh, stores around at the beginning of the conflict and also our uh, logistics expertise and, and being able to coordinate that effort. Uh, just one final comment from me, a big thank you to our partners, particularly UK. Uh, this particular deployment has been well worked through with our partners through donor conferences and we know that our people will be looked after and highly regarded in their time uh, in the UK. Kia ora everybody.
So we've just heard from Defence Minister Penny Henare and Commander Joint Forces New Zealand Rear Admiral Jim Gilmore as the New Zealand Army Infantry Training Team gets set to depart for the UK. So they'll be boarding in the next 20 minutes or so and we'll see them depart at around 8am this morning. So in total, 120 personnel will be working alongside partners in the UK to train Ukrainian infantry recruits in core skills. Gilmore said this morning he hoped that the team would have a real impact in training them in the UK to go into Ukraine. They did of course touch on the recent death of Dominic Abelin. They said that the personnel heading to the UK today will not have any opportunity to go on pay without leave addressing that issue of New Zealand personnel going into Ukraine on their own to fight. If you are just joining us, members of the New Zealand Defence Force are set to head over to the UK this morning to help train Ukrainian recruits as the fight against Russia's invasion continues. We've just heard from Minister of Defence Penny Henare here at the Royal New Zealand Air Force Base in Fanuapai. Up to 120 personnel will be working alongside partners in the UK to help train infantry recruits in Ukraine in what's being described as core skills. Now the deployment comes after the government announced its further support for Ukraine just two weeks ago, saying the deployment would extend until late November. We heard from Commander Joint Forces New Zealand Rear Admiral Jim Gilmore earlier and he said that the team were feeling good about heading overseas and were looking forward to making a difference. They will be departing here in Whanuapai at around 8 o'clock this morning.
Meanwhile, a New Zealand nurse has left her job at Middlemore Hospital to be a combat nurse in Ukraine. And it sparked conversation of more potentially doing the same now the New Zealand government has warned of the dangers of travelling to Ukraine. This, of course, comes just a week after New Zealand soldier Demolet. Uh, Dominic Abelin was killed fighting in Ukraine while on leave without pay. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade have said that there were two New Zealanders registered on safe travel as being in Ukraine, but conceded that it was hard to get a full picture of actual numbers. You are just joining us. We're about to see 120 Defence Force personnel heading to the UK to work alongside partners there and help train infantry recruits in Ukraine in what has been described as core skills this morning. We've heard from Defence Minister Pene Henare as well here in Whanua Pai ahead of their departure. Now the deployment comes after the government announced its further support for Ukraine just two weeks ago, saying the deployment would extend until late November.
We are live here at the Royal New Zealand Air Force Base in Whanua Pai, where members of the New Zealand Defence Force are preparing to head to the United Kingdom to help train Ukrainian recruits as the fight against Russia's invasion continues. So up to 120 personnel will be working alongside partners in the UK to help train infantry recruits in Ukraine in what has been described as core skills. The personnel are set to board shortly as they prepare to take off at around 8am this morning. personnel departing for the UK today of course comes just a week after the tragic death of Kiwi soldier Dominic Abelin who was fighting in Ukraine while on leave without pay. Now Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said more information was being sought from Ukraine following his death but there was still no information about how or when his body would be returned home to New Zealand. While speaking to media yesterday, Ardern reiterated that there was no support on the ground in Ukraine and warned soldiers who wished to do what Abilin did. Although the team heading over there today will not have a chance to go on leave without pay. And so that was something the Defence Minister Penny Hanare said wouldn't be an issue in this case. So the 120 personnel heading to the UK today come after the previous 30 strong deployment from New Zealand earlier this year. 
So Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and Defence Minister Penny Hennady announced this move a couple of weeks ago after a cabinet meeting. They said that the deployment would enable two teams to train Ukrainian infantry with core skills for frontline combat, including weapon handling, combat first aid, operational law and more. That they would contribute to the UK's efforts to train 10,000 Ukrainian troops. Ardern has said that soldier training was now one of the highest priorities for Ukraine. Defence Minister Penny Hennady said that the training would be done only at four locations in the UK so that the New Zealand personnel would not be entering Ukraine. This brings a total number of New Zealand Defence Force personnel deployed to support Ukraine in the war to 224. A comparable amount to partner nations like Denmark at 130 and Sweden 120. New Zealand was asked initially to send LAVs, light armoured vehicles, but Hannity said it was inefficient and ineffective to send those vehicles they, as they have no spare parts and the vehicles would require training. So around 120 personnel are set to board and depart just after 8 o'clock this morning here at the New Zealand Defence Force Base in Vanuapai.
Hey, so listen up, as you come through, one RT and I are first, go through Captain Richardson, show your passport and your ticket. Second first first, show Sergeant Kohala. Okay, just make sure you've got that out there, I'm ready to get it.
You're now seeing the group of 120 New Zealand Defence Force personnel board here at the New Zealand Defence Force base in Whanuapai. They're on their way to the United Kingdom to help train Ukrainian troops. Minister of Defence Penny Henare is here this morning as well. He spoke earlier. He is shaking the hands of each and every one of these troops boarding the plane here this morning. They are set to depart very shortly. They'll be helping train Ukraine infantry recruits in what's been described as core skills. Now the deployment comes after the government announced its further support for Ukraine just over two weeks ago, saying the deployment would extend until late November. It also comes after the completion of the previous 30 strong deployment we sent earlier this year. The deployment you're seeing here this morning would enable two teams to train Ukrainian infantry with core skills for frontline combat, including weapon handling, combat first aid, operational law and more. It also contributes to the UK's efforts to train 10,000 Ukrainian troops. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern recently said that soldier training was now one of the highest priorities for Ukraine. And the decision to send the 120 personnel boarding this morning brings the total number of New Zealand Defence Force personnel deployed to support Ukraine in the war to 224. The team you're seeing board here would be split into two teams and they'll train approximately 800 Ukrainian Armed Forces personnel. The team being sent this morning of course comes just a week after New Zealand soldier Dominic Abelin was killed while fighting in Ukraine while on leave without pay. Defence Minister Penny Henari who spoke earlier this morning expressed his condolences to the family and to many of his colleagues who are part of this 120 strong group heading to the United Kingdom. As boarding nears completion, we will see them depart very shortly here at the Air New Zealand Defence Force, rather New Zealand Defence Force base here in Whanua Pai. As you see live pictures here on the ground.
So if you are just joining us, the deployment who have just finished boarding set for the UK will enable teams, two teams, to train Ukrainian infantry with what's been described as core skills this morning that includes frontline combat, including weapon handling, combat first aid and operational law and more. Defence Minister Penny Hannity said that the training would be done only at four locations in the United Kingdom, with New Zealand personnel not entering Ukraine. The 120 departing today brings a total number of New Zealand Defence Force personnel deployed to support Ukraine in the war to 224. Now that's comparable to partner nations like Denmark who've sent 130 and Sweden 120. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern recently said that the decisions around New Zealand's contribution to the Ukraine war effort were weighted towards what is needed and requested and what was able to be supported by other partners in the region and of course New Zealand's strengths.
photos. <laughs> Go into it.